News 5, leading the way with breaking news. And a big day here in greater Cincinnati, a presidential visit to northern Kentucky. All of this while the Bengals are talking for the very first time since Monday night's medical scare on the field. And thanks for joining us at 4 o'clock. I'm Cherie Palello. And I'm Ashley Kirkland. Our team is following the latest updates on both fronts. We start with Mike Dardis and Olivia Ray live at Paycor Stadium, where Bengals head coach Zach Taylor spoke to the media for the first time since Monday night, guys. Ashley and Cherie, thanks so much. You know, down here at Paycor and seeing some activity for the first time in a couple of days as far as the players walking back and forth. They're going through a walkthrough, I guess, in a little bit, Olivia. We've had a couple of days, nearly 48 hours. The game obviously was a night game at 8 o'clock, 8.30, but nearly 48 hours to process this. But the way we process it and the way the players and coaches process it, far different. They're involved. It's their brothers there down in the field, the guys that they go to war with. And, and today we're finally seeing them back in action, also hearing from them as well. Yes, obviously this is going to be an emotional, I think, entire future for their careers, right? But especially the next time they step on the field, the next time they get back to work, which is today. Uh, Zach Taylor did speak with us, gave a lengthy opening statement today for the first time since this incident. He spend some time thanking the medical personnel, the Bills organization, the entire city of Cincinnati for how they responded. But then he also did walk us through these emotional moments that occurred down on the field. Again, let's take a look at the video from Monday night as players were in shock. They were in tears. Both sidelines came together. He spent a lot of time talking about a specific player of his, Tyler Boyd, and how he was trying to watch how he was processing the information they played and, pit in together, the scene, right? right because yeah they were former college teammates at Pittsburgh together. So um, he was trying to use Tyler Boyd as, as maybe how to handle, how to deal with the Bills sideline. And he also described the immediate conversations he was having on the field with Sean McDermott. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Yeah, I look at Sean and those players, all they were doing is looking at their teammate and their brother and, and hoping for the best there. That's the only thing going through their minds. I didn't say a word to anybody the entire time, except for TB, um, who, who knew DeMar, and, and I could tell that he was going through it. So I could just see the expressions on Jordan Poyer's face and Josh Allen's face and TB's face. And so you're processing just uh, um, you know how, how uh, awful the situation was. We separated his teams. Uh, the officials, again, did a great job of coming over to me and saying, hey, um, you know, they're, they're still trying to process this moment here, uh, Coach McDermott and their team. And so um, instead of playing telephone on separate sidelines, the decision was made just to go over there and, and make sure we're all, you know, talking together. And, and I won't disclose um, any of the private conversations Sean and I had except for this. When I got over there, uh, the first thing he said was, I need to be at the hospital tomorrow and I shouldn't be coaching this game. And so that to me provides all the clarity. Head coach Zach Taylor speaking, of course, of Bills head coach Sean McDermott and the immediate moments following this injury saying it taught or it told him a lot about how he feels about Sean McDermott as a leader of men and, and just as a human being. Obviously, he also said that there was never a consideration to continue that game Monday night. He went on to say that in that soundbite. We know football is an emotional game, but it's also big business, billions and billions of dollars. We now know that the Bengals game on Sunday has been scheduled against the Ravens. They're going to host them at 1 p.m. Uh, we don't know if it's for the division crown or not because we don't know what's going to happen with the Buffalo game. But uh, it is back to business, and the coach had some interesting thoughts on trying to not maybe put this behind you. You can't do that because of the gravity of it. But moving on to play a football game after all of this on Sunday, what did he have to say about that? Right. He said there has to be a balance. There's no way that these players can just put this emotional you know, tragedy behind them, and especially in a day's time, because they are back to work today going through walkthrough. So he said there has to be a balance, but he also said that the players, they know what they sign up for. When they want to play in the NFL, it's a dangerous business, and they do have to get ready for a game now on Sunday. He said it's a one-in-a-million kind of situation, something you obviously – don't see too often. Speaking about DeMar Hamlin, here we are now, about 40 hours after he suffered cardiac arrest on that football field, six minutes to go in the first quarter of that Monday night football game. How is he doing today? And let's talk more about those heroes on that football field who kept him alive. He's in critical condition right now. Todd Dykes, WLWT News 5 reporter, has been on the story the last couple days at UC Medical Center. Todd? 
Yeah, hi guys. Uh, Mike, I'll tell you, and Olivia, there's no update today from officials here at UC Medical Center. We all had hoped that something uh, might be said by those officials at some point, but nothing so far, though we did hear from a close friend of uh, DeMar Hamlin's who said that the family got some encouraging news this morning based on what doctors were indicating, the positive uh, reports uh, overnight and this morning. So that is some encouraging news, but nothing official. But like you said, we are learning a lot more about the sequence of events that unfolded immediately after the 24-year-old fell to the field there at Paycor Stadium. Officials with the NFL, including the league's chief medical officer, talked at length this afternoon about uh, the incident and a lot of the discussion really was focused on steps that team trainers, EMTs and doctors take before each game to be ready in case a player experiences some kind of a traumatic injury. Uh, Dr. Alan Sills says it is not an exaggeration to credit that level of preparation with making sure Hamlin has a fighting chance moving forward. He cites three E's that medical pros pay close attention to. The first is our emergency action plan. Every stadium and every training facility has a very detailed plan that describes for a variety of medical emergencies exactly what needs to happen. The second E is equipment. We obviously have all of the necessary equipment to support life-threatening emergencies. And then the third E is an enhanced preparation. Every one of our clubs practices and drills on these exact scenarios every year before the season starts. And in an even more granular way, Sill says there's a meeting one hour before each NFL game to make sure that every medical personnel who's at the stadium knows what's going on and is on the same page. They're called 60-minute meetings. Uh, they're very detailed, down to the kind of hand signals that athletic trainers would show depending on the kind of injury a player might sustain. So a lot of detailed planning going in, and it certainly seemed to be to come into play on Monday night. We're now reporting live outside UC Medical Center, Todd Dykes, WWT News 5. And Todd, you mentioned the National Football League. They did not address DeMar Hamlin's condition today, but the Buffalo Bills did release some information. Could you talk about that a little bit for us? Yeah, Mike, and also I should note that during that news conference, that virtual news conference, those NFL officials said that information about DeMar would be coming from the club and, or his family. The Buffalo Bills organization did provide an update of sorts today via Twitter. In a tweet, the bill cited signs of improvement that were noted by doctors here at UC Medical Center both yesterday and overnight. So again, we're all hoping for the best. Some encouraging news at this point, but nothing official. We're waiting for that official word. Mike? All right, Todd Dykes live for us, UC Medical.